Hey all, Dan Waller here. If you haven't yet started dipping your toes into scripting, I've got a tutorial showing you that scripting can be as simple as creating a script file asset in Studio, copying some template script from one of the help docs, pasting it into your script file and saving it to see the results in your scene. We've also released multi-plane tracking for tracking multiple horizontal and vertical surfaces. We have haptic feedback to trigger vibration on Instagram. You can control layers now through the new layers module. We have block updates with input and output for audio and animation. There are new 3D environments in the simulator to test your world effects. We've got new search and filter options in the scene and layers panels and both the viewport and patch editor are now detachable. Let's dive on in because we have a lot to catch up on. If you were watching Connect, you will have seen that we're now Meta Spark and we're thrilled to see that so many of you in the Meta Spark community love the rebrand. So we can't wait to bring you some really exciting new features under our new banner. At Connect, we gave you all a peep into the future of AR with a key next building block being virtual objects in MetaSpark. And in the not too distant future, you'll be able to build these virtual objects in MetaSpark Studio and test them in the MetaSpark player on MetaQuest devices. Now this is a super exciting jump forward on the road to AR glasses. We're now inviting creators and developers who have JavaScript skills and experience in 3D creation to sign up for consideration for early beta access. Now I mentioned JavaScript skills and experience in 3D because they're gonna be key to building more sophisticated AR experiences that light up the world around us. And if you haven't yet started exploring these, there's no time like the present. So I thought we could get started today just taking a quick look at how you can use scripting to elevate your world AR experiences. So scripting is important because while the patch editor is super powerful, there are some things that you can't get done without scripting. So for example, while we've released the dynamic environment texture that you can use to light an object realistically, sometimes that's overkill and you just need a simpler, more lightweight solution. And this is where something like the lighting estimation module in scripting can come in. So let's take a look at it. To demonstrate all this, I've created a very simple scene here. I've just added a sphere floating here in space. You can see it up here in the simulator. And I just have a default ambient and directional light as we do with any new uh, scene that we're starting to build. Uh, so what we want to do is make it so the brightness of the simulator, the lighting that's coming in through the camera, affects the lighting that we have uh, inside our scene and makes our sphere go brighter or darker depending on how bright or dark that simulator is. Uh, we're going to do this through the lighting estimation module and to do that we need to first create a script. So I'm going to go over into the assets panel here. I'll click plus and I can choose script and JavaScript. So we're going to start creating a JavaScript script and we can see it here in the assets panel called script.js. Now to begin editing this, we can just right click on it and choose edit and that's going to pop open in whatever default editor we have set and that could just be a very simple text editing app. We don't need anything fancy for it. However, it can be helpful if you're using a dedicated code editor so you get things like syntax highlighting and other tools that make it a bit easier. Uh, myself, I like to use a great free option called Visual Studio Code and I'll show you some of the advantages of it. So let's dive on in. I'll swipe over, we've got Visual Studio Code open. And one of the big benefits is if we go over here on the left hand side, uh, and click on the extensions, you can see we have an extension for Meta Spark Studio that's gonna help for things like syntax highlight, highlighting a live connection back to Spark and so on. So you'll see down in the right hand corner here, once we've got the extension installed, we can create a uh, live link to MetaSpark Studio. So I'll click on this, it takes a little moment and then it all goes green to tell us that MetaSpark Studio is live and running. And now we uh, switch back to the Explorer and you can see we have our Spark AR project running uh, where we have the script that I've just created listed. So here, if I click on it, we can see that I've got all the script uh, that's inside that .js file. And if you haven't seen one before, we're not gonna go into all the crazy details, all the nuance, we're gonna move as quickly as we can. Uh, but the most important thing to keep in mind 
uh, is that all of the green lines here inside uh, Visual Studio Code for my script are uh, commented out. So there are a couple of different ways we can comment out the script. We can put a forward slash uh, and then a couple of asterisks, asterisks uh, to start commenting out a block of code. Uh, and then we can um, add a another asterisk and a forward slash at the end. So anything in that block is going to get commented out and it's not going to get run as a piece of script. And we can also comment out uh, by adding two forward slashes to a single line of code. What this means is this is just a note or it's a piece of script we don't want to actually use. So we've added these two slashes um, to make sure uh, it's not actually running, but we're keeping this information in there. Uh, so you can see this is really handy where we have, for example, welcome to scripting in Metaspark Studio. And we have some helpful links listed here uh, with some further tutorials and so on that we can follow. Um, we do then have a few lines uh, that don't have any comment uh, indicators in front of them. And so we can see there's one line of code here, one line of code here, another one here with a little comment just after it. And same again, um, wrapping up that uh, very, very simple script that's in here by default. Um, so rather than diving in and starting to edit, uh, what we'll find is most programmers at some point in time are going to be copying and pasting bits of code uh, to make things a little bit faster and easier for them. And fortunately, most of our help references have uh, code samples we can use uh, to accelerate our scripting and make things a lot easier. So if I dive into the Spark website, uh, we have our learn section. And over on the left hand side, we have uh, categories for scripting and the scripting API. And under the scripting API, we have a dedicated article here for the lighting estimation module, which we can see just here. So if I scroll down, we can see we have a code snippet again with comments in here that are telling us, uh, giving a bit of, bit of information, some helpful information about how to use these lines of code. And then we have the code itself. So what I can do is simply copy paste uh, this code. I can go back into uh, VS Code and I can paste it straight over the top. Uh, in this way, I've re completely replaced the code with what I need for the lighting estimation module. Let's have a quick little look through. We are bringing in uh, the lighting estimation module. We are bringing in the reactive module and the scene module. These are things that enable functions that we can then access. It's kind of like turning on a capability uh, inside the project settings inside Spark. It's saying we're allowed to now use this uh, in our scripting. So we're, because we're bringing in this module, we're allowed to start using our lighting estimation. We're then starting a function. Uh, we're creating a new constant called ambient light. Uh, and we are then looking through the scene hierarchy and we're assigning the ambient light to the new constant called ambient light. Uh, you can think of these uh, lines of code wherever we see an equal sign like this as similar to the patch editor. Um, the anything to the left hand side of the equal sign is one patch. Anything to the right hand side of the equal sign is another patch. And that equal sign is the same as drawing a cable uh, between those ports on those patches. So we're just assigning one thing to another thing and making that connection. Uh, so after creating that object called ambient light uh, and finding the actual ambient light in the scene uh, and connecting it to it, we then are uh, creating a constant called light intensity. And we're then using our reactive module that we've activated here uh, to bring in our lighting estimation dot frame brightness and connect it to this new constant called light intensity. You'll notice that we have a little reactive dot sub. This is the same as using a subtract patch to subtract uh, the lighting estimation frame brightness from one. All right, so this is all staying a little bit uh, abstract, a little bit theoretical for now, but by explaining, we'll be able to dive in and start tinkering with these, uh, you know, the, these little lines of code. And just underneath here, we have the ambient light dot intensity. Uh, so the intensity value of the ambient light that we've assigned to the constant. So we have the constant here and we're then pulling in that attribute intensity and we're making it equal the light intensity here that we've pulled in from the lighting estimation frame brightness. So all I need to do is hit Command S uh, if I'm on my Mac or Control S, I believe, oh, if we're on Windows and we've saved that script. So I've saved my changes in here. 
And now when I go back into Spark here, you can see already my lighting is starting to change on my sphere. So we can see the script is already running. If I go to the ambient light here, you can see the intensity value is now grayed out. I can't click and change it uh, and I can't create a new input port because you'll see that little highlight, it's saying it's being set in the script. And you can see that value there is changing around a little bit. Now if I'm to make my camera darker, we can see the sphere is going brighter. The ambient light is going brighter. And if I make my camera brighter, we can see the sphere is going darker and that intensity value is going up and down inside the inspector. So just like that, a couple of uh, clicks, a copy, a paste into the script editor and we have a new script running on the lighting estimation module. However, what I'd like to do is just get in there, tinker a little bit more uh, to make it do some cool stuff. Um, you may have just noticed when it went, uh, when the camera went darker, the sphere went brighter. Uh, when the camera went brighter, the sphere went darker. So that we can intuit that that's because of that reactive dot sub. Um, so let's jump in here. Rather than making the lighting intensity um, equal to the inverse, uh, the one minus of the frame brightness, let's just make it straight up equal the frame brightness. So I can come in here and delete this. One thing I like to do, let's just have a quick little look, is before I start messing with a line of code I know works, I like to copy it and then comment it out just so I can keep it for storage and kind of refer back to it. So because I've commented it out with the two forward slashes, this line of code's no longer going to run and instead I can edit this one and make it do stuff. So I'm going to delete uh, the reactive.sub open brackets one comma and because I opened the bracket or I deleted the open bracket, I need to uh, delete the close bracket that it goes with. Uh, if I don't, uh, VS Code may highlight the error for me. And now I can hit Command S. Um, so I've saved this and I've now uh, removed that inversion. Let's have a look back in Spark. We can see it's very bright now. Uh, if I make my camera go darker, we can see the sphere is going darker. If I make the camera brighter, you can see the sphere going brighter. And so we can just keep playing from there. So I could, for example, change it from ambient light zero to directional light zero. Let's see how that works. So I'll jump back over to here. Rather than assigning the ambient light zero here to the ambient light constant, I could just change this to directional light zero, command S and back over. And now we have the directional light intensity being controlled by the camera brightness. So if I disable my ambient light and then change my camera brightness again, we can see the sphere is fading out. And if you look in the simulator top right there, we can see that it's really reacting uh, to the brightness of the camera feed. Uh, if we wanted to go one step further, maybe we could bring back uh, some of this reactive here. Um, I could type in reactive.sub uh, open bracket and close bracket, but maybe rather than using subtract, I could use mul for multiply. I could then have maybe three comma. Um, so I'm now using a multiply function within our reactive module to multiply the frame brightness coming from my lighting estimation by three. I'm now gonna hit command S and we'll go back in here. So you can see now the sphere is much brighter. It's re reacting more strongly to the camera frame brightness. And you can see we're getting um, a, a brighter highlight overall. So we can keep tinkering in that way, playing with different bits and pieces, referring back to that help documentation, exploring those different functions and copying, pasting script out. Uh, so with that, you can see very simple, very straightforward um, to get our scripting going. And if you have not yet started dipping your toes in, really highly recommend um, just starting to have a bit of a play. Uh, becomes increasingly important when we're looking at things like maybe multi-peer uh, to create uh, shared AR experiences over video calls. Scripting becomes uh, really, really helpful with those kinds of things as well. So it opens up a whole new load of possibilities for us. We're very excited that we've released multi-plane tracking, uh, which is a more robust uh, plane tracking solution that also allows you to track planes of different heights in the same room, uh, walls, all sorts of stuff. Um, there are two new templates in the welcome window. 
uh, one uh, that's set up primarily using patches and the other set up primarily using scripting. So if you're keen to explore and deconstruct these and reverse engineer them to see how they're built, uh, you can use it again as another way to learn more about scripting. Uh, when you open up uh, one of them, you're going to be greeted with something like this. Uh, you can see we've got a fancy new uh, UI instructions automatically built in, helping guide people for how to uh, start using the effect once you've published it. And as with all the templates, we have helpful uh, bubbles uh, around the interface to guide you how to update it, how to modify it and customize it uh, to make it your own. So multi-plane tracking, really powerful. Definitely dive on in, um, have a look at it, uh, open up these test effects, uh, push the test links to your phone as well uh, and have an explore uh, with how to use these because they look really, really cool and they're going to make uh, more powerful world tracking experiences available to all of us. We've added a brand new haptic feedback API as well, and you'll be able to find more information about how to use this one on the Spark AR website under the haptic feedback module. Uh, follow the links on the left-hand side. Uh, and you're gonna be able to use this one again, one of those scripting only features for now uh, to cause the user's uh, device to vibrate uh, at a moment of your choosing. And we're already seeing uh, amazing creators start to build some incredible stuff uh, particularly around AR games. Uh, so it might be that maybe something explodes or you tap on a drum or something like that in the AR experience visually, uh, and you can then trigger a physical response on the device by making it vibrate as well. So in that way, we're gonna be able to elevate uh, the immersive level of these experiences. So cool stuff ahead there, I'm sure. Another scripting friendly feature as well is the layers module. So using the layers module, you're going to be able to uh, control your layers via scripting. So you'll be able to reorder them dy dynamically, uh, create and destroy them and assign objects uh, dynamically to different layers too. So it'll give you uh, more flexibility and control through that layers module via scripting uh, of the render order of different objects inside your scene. We've also got a range of updates for blocks that have come out recently. So let's dive on in. I've created a simple scene to demo. Uh, so we've got a block here. We can, of course, create blocks just through the plus button on the assets panel. And once we've created a block, we can instantiate it into a scene to start working with it. Uh, so with the block selected here, we have uh, over in the inspector panel, uh, inputs listed out. And we can see that there are currently no inputs on this block. And to see the outputs, we need to drag the block down into the patch editor. And we can see it has no outputs beyond passing out the object itself from that output port. Uh, there is a new way uh, to see what the inputs and outputs of a block is. That's through the blocks module, again, through scripting. And through this blocks module, you'll be able to see what are the inputs and outputs on a given block. And then you'll be able to use those as a reference to create new connections for data and so on. So it's gonna make it a bit easier to work with blocks inside scripting. However, when it comes to those inputs and outputs, we've also expanded the range of inputs and outputs available, which is very, very exciting. Uh, so we can double click on a block to open up that block inside a new copy of Metaspark Studio. And here we are inside the block. So we know we're in the block because in the scene panel, we've got the block root right at the root of the scene. There is no device in there as we would have uh, normally in a regular copy of uh, Metaspark Studio. Uh, and with the block selected over on the right hand side, we can go to the blocks properties. We can see now we're listing both the inputs and outputs under block properties we can then start to create new inputs and outputs here. So I'm gonna click on plus for inputs uh, and you can see under type, we now take uh, different animation uh, types as input and output as well as audio. So two new data types, animation and audio, able to go both uh, into a block and as an output. Uh, from a block. So that's going to make uh, a lot of new creative opportunities available. And I've seen some people very, very excited about the audio in and out in particular. We've also released a range of new 3D testing environments that are going to make it over time easier and easier to test out your world-based effects. 
Uh, so you're going to find them under the uh, video menu. Uh, so if we have a look up here, we can see real-time simulation down the bottom. Uh, and we've got a range of different testing environments there available to us. Uh, so we can look around inside these environments. There are a range of them in both daytime and nighttime scenarios. Um, looking around, we can then also press the W key to move forward. Uh, the S key to move back, A to go left, D to go right, and then we've also got X and C uh, to crouch and to go higher, so up and down. And um, this is going to make it easier to test out our world experiences over time. If you've been building uh, really big effects with lots of assets in them, you may have found sometimes it can get a little bit unwieldy trying to work in the uh, scene panel and in the layers panel, trying to find everything and keep track of it. Uh, previously, we added searching functionality to the assets panel, and we've now added that same searching functionality to both the scene and the layers panel. So we can just type in search terms there to filter what we have. Uh, so for example, I've got in here some lights and a block and a plane tracker. Uh, if I type in uh, block, we can see all of the other uh, non-essential uh, components of the scene hierarchy disappear and we filter just down to the block. I say non-essential because our device camera focal distance and microphone are fixed assets in that scene hierarchy that we can't get rid of. Um, so if I delete that, we'll go back to just showing me everything. We've also then got that filtering. Uh, so I could filter by just show me the things that are for scene understanding and it's gonna just show me my plane tracker. Uh, in this instance, I could show, say, show me the blocks as well. Also show me my lights and we can um, just show all objects too. So it'll make it a bit easier to keep track of everything uh, as your scene hierarchies and your layers grow. If you remember a while back, we added undockable simulator with our little um, docking button here so we can redock and undock. And I'm now very excited that we've also added it to both the patch editor and the viewport. So over on the patch editor here, we now have the same little undock button. We can then scale our patch editor around, position it where we want. We can move it onto a second monitor to give us some more working room if we wish. I know many of you are gonna be very excited about that one. And similarly, we've got the undock button up here on the viewport and we can click again to redock and same for the patch editor, same for the simulator. So really cool, it's gonna give us more flexibility with when we're working and the ability to customize our workspaces. So it's a range of new and exciting features inside Metaspark Studio. Some of them are going to enable new types of experiences to be built and others are just gonna make it easier for you to work inside uh, Metaspark Studio and get your work done. And as you saw, many of them um, being boosted and helped along by scripting. Uh, so just that reminder that developing those skills, dipping your toe in if you haven't yet, is gonna make your work easier and easier. And it doesn't need to be scary. It can be really, really accessible. You'll see how uh, with Vivian Gallinari, she's been building an amazing series of scripting tutorials uh, with us at Meta. You'll find those on the Learn tab at sparkar.facebook.com. Definitely advise going and checking them out and we'll drop some links if we can alongside this video. Uh, today's cover image effect uh, is coming to you from Alexi Cernin and he's from ARI's studio. This effect is called Patch Editor and I just love it. I'm obsessed with it. Uh, you'll have to excuse the pun, but it's a little bit meta. Uh, it's leveraging uh, scripting and the new multiplane capability to bring a fully functioning patch editor uh, into an AR experience. So you can bring the patches into your world create new patches, wire them up, and use them to actually build Logic Live. This is really exciting, very funny, and very cool. Uh, amazing work, Alexi. Everyone, head along, give Alexi a follow. Um, it's Alexi Cernan on Instagram, and you can check out more of his amazing work. So thanks so much for giving me your time today. I'm really excited by everything I'm seeing coming out of the community. Can't wait to see you again very soon. Until then, have fun, keep on creating.